This is the ultimate no BS guide to Apocalypse and MCOC. Beginning with his abilities, he has a persistent charge mechanic called Genetic Code. After winning a fight, he will gain one Genetic Code, and after fighting a mutant, he gains two. Every Genetic Code counts as a passive prowess on yourself that increases special damage by 40%. At three Genetic Code, Apocalypse becomes stun immune while striking, and at four, he can inflict a stun when attacking into an opponent's block using a light attack. Apocalypse has a way to develop immunities throughout a fight. Each time he's inflicted with a bleed, incinerate, or disorient effect, he becomes more likely to gain immunity to this that will persist through the rest of the quest. Additionally, he has a way to counter evade. Every time that the opponent will evade him, he places a charge on the opponent that stacks up to 10, each decreasing the next chance of evade by 10%. Additionally, opponents will suffer 100% purifiability accuracy reduction, which means they cannot shrug off your debuffs. Apocalypse Heavy Attack inflicts a bleed damage that will last for 7 seconds, and it will refresh your weaknesses, poisons, concussions, and degenerations on your opponent. Apocalypse's special attacks place damage over time effects depending on how you end your combo, and each hit of the special attack deals a burst damage depending on how many debuffs you have on the opponent of your special attack variety. The special attack 1 can trigger either a uh, weakness or a poison depending on what you end your combo with, or if you're at 4 genetic code or fighting a mutant, you will trigger both of them. Special attack 2 is very similar. If you end it in a light, you will stack a concussion on the opponent, and if you end in a median, you will place a G generation on the opponent. If you're 4 genetic code, you will trigger both, and if you're fighting a mutant, you will also trigger both. Finally, the special 3 will refresh all the weakness, poison, concussion, and degen effects on your opponent, and it will increase the potency by 100%, and it will make the debuffs permanent for the rest of the fight. Finally, he can activate the Horseman of Apocalypse abilities. Once at 4 persistent charges or the genetic codes, he can have a pre-fight to place on any mutant on the team. The abilities of this include 100% bleed resistance, an indefinite 50% prowess, 30% offensive ability reduction, going unblockable for 2 seconds every time the opponent purifies a debuff, and once per fight you are able to go unstoppable for 3 seconds when struck. Now I will look at the synergies that solely benefit Apocalypse. He has one with himself called the first one, which means he will gain 15% attack for each other mutant on the team, so not himself. This means you can have a maximum of up to 60% more damage in a given fight. The next energy is your fate is mine with either Mr. Sinister, King, or Cable. This means that at the start of your quest, you will have a maximum genetic code of 4, so you do not need to beat 4 opponents in order to require the bonuses that come with it. First, we'll look at the standard matchup where you can bleed and poison the opponent. The first thing you're going to want to do when you jump into this fight is you're going to want to build up to your special one, throw it off, and put the poison and the weakness debuff on your opponent. And then as those are up, you want to refresh them by hitting into their block and throwing a heavy attack. Next, you want to build up enough power to your special two where you can throw it off, get your degeneration and concussion on the opponent so that you've maxed debuffs and your special attacks are doing the maximum amount of damage. Next, you want to refresh them again with another heavy attack so they don't expire. Build up to your special one again, throw it off, and then after this, you are going to build up to another special one, and the fight will be over. Here is the full fight if you did not understand what I said before. Skip to the next timestamp to find out about how to do a standard poison immune matchup.
Next, we will look at the standard poison immune matchup. Since you cannot place a poison in this matchup, you will want to start the fight by throwing off your special 2, which will place a concussion on degeneration on the opponent, which means your special attacks throughout the fight will be doing more damage. Next, you want to refresh the debuffs and go into your special 1 so that you can place the last weakness on the opponent, which is the last of your debuffs. Now, continue building your power and refreshing your heavies with the debuffs as you go along. Then, you will throw your special 3 to make all the debuffs permanent and double damage, but if it is a lower health pool, you do not need to do this. So, next, you will continue playing the fight and you will throw your special 1s until the opponent is down. Since you only have 3 debuffs up on the opponent instead of 4 like the standard matchup, it will take a bit longer, but it can be done just as easily. This is the full fight to the poison immune matchup if you do not understand what I said before. Skip to the next timestamp to see how to deal with your standard Labyrinth of Legends fight. Now I will quickly go over the standard Labyrinth of Legends fight, and this rule can apply to either poison immune matchups or matchups where you can bleed and poison the opponent. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is build up to your first special 1. Throw the special 1 or build to a special 2 if you are fighting a poison immune opponent. Next, build up to your special 2, and if you are fighting a poison opponent, then you will go to your special 1 secondly. Remember to hit in your opponent's block or stun them normally via parry so you can throw heavy attacks and refresh your debuffs until you get to the special 3. Now throw your special 3 so that your debuffs can become permanent and their potency will be doubled. Now for the remainder of the fight keep using your special 1 until the opponent is down. If the strife synergy is used then this damage will be very good and it will finish the opponent much quicker than without it. If you do not understand how I just explained the Labyrinth of Legends fight, you can watch this clip of the full fight sped up to 4 times speed. And if you don't want to, skip to the next timestamp where we will talk about shrug off champions, evade champions, and how to heavy counter with Apocalypse. Once again, there is no audio in this clip.
Now we will look at how Kingpin shrugs off debuffs from champions. He is a very potent ability where if you place a debuff on him, it will likely be converted into a rage stack. After Kingpin reaches 8, he will gain a fury. Apocalypse is able to bypass this, however, able to place bleeds, stuns, poisons, weaknesses, concussions, and degenerations on the opponent without him shrugging them off. Thus, he will never gain the fury rages, and thus, he will never become that hard to deal with. Now, we will look at another mutant champion that has a lot of debuffs, Sunspot. As you can see in this fight, Kingpin is easily able to shrug off Sunspot's incinerates and gain his furies. Thus, he is not a great option for this fight. But however, Apocalypse can bypass this, being great for champions who can shrug off like Kingpin, Mole Man, Crossbones, Jabari Panther, and Hitmonkey, along with several others. Next, we will look at Apocalypse's Evade mechanic. While it is not the best mechanic in the game, it is still very effective. As you can see, once Spider-Man Evade, he received a red dashback charge in his top right corner. This means that every time we put this on the opponent, they decrease their chance of evading by 10%. So this means that at 30, he is now at a 30% reduction in chance to evade. And now I will skip to what happens when you are at 10 stacks or 100 evade charges. As you can see, at 80 charges, he is already failing evade quite frequently. He evades once more and we are up to 90, and this means he has a 90% reduction in chance to evade. This means that Apocalypse is very good at this point, and now that he is at 100, he will never evade for the rest of the fight and throughout the rest of the quest. This makes Apocalypse a solid option for in a quest when there are a lot of evade opponents on a single path. Next, we will look at heavy counter with Apocalypse. This is an important skill to learn because you will need to refresh your debuffs before you launch your special 3. As you can see, you cannot just launch your heavy attack after someone like Winter Soldier throws theirs. Instead, you have to bait it out, dash back, throw a light, and then charge your heavy and it will connect. Similarly on the special 1, you can block the first path of it. Then once it hits you, you do another light hit, and then you do your heavy attack. Champions like Captain Marvel have a very similar counter, where they will throw their heavy, you dash back, do a light attack, and then heavy attack, and it will counter them. It is important to remember that Apocalypse's first hit of the heavy attack is shorter range than the rest of it, so it is important to learn that every champion will have a different reach and distance that you need to learn in order to counter with a heavy but it is an important skill to learn so you do not lose your debuffs, an example for stun immune matchups. The final thing I will discuss is Strife's synergy with Apocalypse. The synergy with Strife says that he gains plus 25% attack energy damage for each special attack he throws throughout the fight, which can stack up to 300% maximum damage. This means that the red numbers coming off Apocalypse's special 2 can go from the usual 6,800 as a rank 3 6 star, to around 27 to 31,000 damage. This has been the complete no BS guide to Apocalypse and Marvel Contest of Champions. Thank you for watching.